Hello there, you beautiful people. My name is Willow, and welcome back to Supreme Commander Forge Lines Forever for another 2v2 cast, this time on Twin Rivers, and it's a Sabar Commander. And it's played on the 2v2 ladder. So before we get into introducing our players, let's go ahead and take a quick look at the map. It is, of course, Twin Rivers, quite the classic, nearly 10,000 reclaim. And, of course, we have Team Red at the top and Team Blue at the bottom. We're going to start off with Team Red. Going first is going to be the Maroon UEF. Going first land by the name of Legend Theo. And then we can go ahead and go down to his ally, another UEF, this time in a bright red. Going first land by the name of Havran001. Then we can move on to the blue team with the light blue Cybern going first land by the name of Lucas55555. Then last but not least for the entire game, we have a dark blue UEF going first land by the name of that guy 2525. And that's all of our players introduced and we can get into the action. We're going to go ahead and just speed this up a little bit. Maybe we'll see a little bit of harassment coming out. And of course, we can talk about various things like the channel membership program where you get to see Casts earlier than everybody else. I know it's so amazing. If you want access to this unique and amazing benefit, please go ahead and go down below and hit the join button and see what your options are. Other than that, consider liking, commenting, and subscribing as it helps out the channel tremendously. And I will stop shilling. I know nobody likes these calls to action, but sadly, they work. Whenever I say stuff, you all tend to do it more often than whenever I don't, as we have two mech marines making their way down south moving fast and two more behind them all coming out from Hav no Havren Havren and they are going to be trying to get some monetary damage done would that be correct economic damage done on to the player known as that guy 2525 and there's an engineer over here reclaiming under threat of a very very painful death at the hands of these mech marine machine guns and yep that's going to be a very very dead engineer and yeah, also very soon, I think it might be the day that this goes live or maybe the day after we are going to be having a birthday stream. Yes, my birthday is coming up and we're going to be streaming on it. Going to be a lot of fun. See if you can show up. That is, of course, scheduled on the channel already. The Mech Marines picked up one kill there. Another group of Mech Marines comes in, kills off, I believe, another engineer there. Going to kill off these two mass extractors. The two Mech Marines in the back line over here. Here, running away from some snoop striker action trying not to die maybe if they get lucky they can take out this striker without dying themselves but unfortunately that is not the case and both groups of mech marines are cleaned up by that guy 2525 and he still has an engineer here in the back line to finish up this hydrocarbon and possibly build up all of the mechs that belong to him so with all of that out of the way, we have our first drop over here to the east. We're going to go ahead and go down to normal speed as I'm having a little bit of trouble keeping up here with Haverin making himself a T1 land factory over on this island, which means he is most likely going to be able to secure this island for his team. Once you get this up, you just start building tanks, artillery, a couple of anti-air, and you're in a really, really good position to hold on to this island. And on the northern side, we don't have any play for the island just yet but we probably will see some form of transport heading that way here soon lucas gonna have a very interesting play well i switched over to his view a little bit too early but a very interesting play nonetheless going for a jester let's go ahead and track the jester just to see what exactly he gets up to with this little harassing t1 gunship available to the cybern and of course it's just gonna land just to uh spite me or something of that nature just not gonna do anything he's forgotten about it and therefore we're gonna forget about it 
So let's go ahead. I just need to hit one button and I hit all of the wrong buttons there. As a T1 bomber comes up here by Legend Theo and he is going to be very sad to find out there is nothing here to be bombed. But of course, that just means you can go ahead and send it down to the south towards the bases to get bombs off down there. Kill off maybe some juicy, juicy engineers as every bomber aspires to do. Over here to the east, we have a couple of mass extractors being taken down by that guy, but his strikers are going to pay for for this transgression with their lives as reinforcing strikers out from Havron 1001 uh, shows up to 001. Uh, how, how badass is that? Uh, Scorger over here is going to be focusing down a mass extractor. If it turns around and fires once more onto that mass extractor, we'll be able to kill it off. Unfortunately decides against it and is instead going to come in and get a bomb off onto the power grid. Not really getting any sustained damage just yet. Maybe he should just focus on one thing for a little bit, not let himself be dictated much as I am by ADD. Four engineers dead with a single pass. Never mind, don't listen to me, just bomb sporadically and you will apparently have some of the best bombs you can get in the early game of Supreme Commander Forge Alliance forever. On the other side of the map, we have a run by now coming out over here from that guy 2525, and he's going to be able to pick up a couple of mass extractors and a kill onto an engineer, but they, this engineer has really done his job, reclaimed everything but this last little pocket of about 100 mass. So that's going to be a very, very sad moment for Haverin, losing such a veteran to reclaim engineer. But in the end, all good things must come to an end. Over here to the west, Legend Theo starting to push towards Lucas's calm. And this could be a little bit dangerous for the UEF. He's going to be right here in the kind of production line of Lucas. And Lucas's comm is here, can start throwing out shots himself. Legend doesn't have any upgrades. He does have a few units now up here with the commander. He's starting to reclaim this factory. He's trying to play very, very aggressively with the commander here. Some Medusa putting some shots into the comm of Legend. And now these strikers in combination with the commander of Legend are going to start pushing back Lucas. Lucas needs to be a little bit careful, but he does have a Jester on the scene. The Jester are going to start firing at some of these units or maybe just fire at the comm. And yes, the comm's taking quite a bit of damage. That guy, 25 25 showing up with a gun comm to the right of Legend Theo, and Legend Theo needs to start running away right now as he starts to take some Medusa fire from standing still, and oh no, we might see our first ejection here before we even reach the 10 minute mark as Legend Theo is going to be forced to fall back against overwhelming numbers. That Jester getting a lot of DPS, these units on the ground getting a decent amount of DPS, but of course the calm of that guy, 2525, really coming in to be the nail in the coffin of the Team 1 Red player. And that's going to leave Havran 001, the MI6 agent, is it MI6 in, double o, uh, in, in 007 and James Bond? Is it? Is it? I think it's MI6. The real one is MI5, isn't it? I don't know. I, I, I It's MI6 or MI5, but no, no, other, it doesn't matter. Special Agent Haverin over here. Gonna be Haverin a great time as he has both the side islands. He has these two bases. He's gonna be sitting on a strong economy. He alone has more economy than both of his opposing uh, opponents. <laughs> Opposing opponents, the double O's of danger, the opposing opponents. Uh, opposers is, I guess, what I could have... Oh, yes, they're, they're posers with an O. And uh, that's a lot of T1AA, but I guess it's it's warranted now. Yep, y you build all of this T1AA, it kills one T1 bomber, totally worth it. And a naval factory has been built over here to the north. This could be a little bit dangerous. Being UEF means that you have access to those governors, which give you that sweet, sweet, juicy threat of long-range siege bombardment from the waters. Also will help with kind of any kind of airplay coming out because it will possibly, if you place one right here, be able to catch anything that flies out of this T1 air factory. Not sure. The, the range would be a little bit suspect, but could be very useful. As that guy, 2525, showing up with his gun comm on the front lines of Haverin 001's base, and is starting to push forward. So Haverin getting T2, he has a few units here, but this is going to be a very hard position to hold. 
Uh, he doesn't have a T2 land as far as I can see. He has a lot of air factories. Maybe a bunch of T1 bombers could really help him out here. Of course, needs to be careful. Probably needs to start thinking about getting a T2 factory somewhere. I don't see any of these factories upgrading just yet. And I don't see any upgrades in the queues. But currently pushing forward now with his commander. Going to build four triads in between these factories. This could be a very, very smart play. So with your own units, your units will fire through your own structures. They will fire through your own units. You will not deal friendly fire damage. So technically speaking, a factory is actually kind of a decent wall for a triad. Because the factory's hitbox will stop things from hitting it. Although I don't recommend building factories as walls, but this this is a little bit of a big brain play. Um, and then now there's like gonna be Grimplex or somebody smart down in the comments saying, oh no, this is stupid. But like, if you're gonna build a bunch of triads, may as well build them behind a factory so that way they don't get shot nearly as much. They get to fire a little bit longer. As over here to the west, T2 now on the way for Lucas, along with a small fleet of these Jester gunships over here. Gonna have a barrel of labs whenever he does get to use those if he can get some harassment done. Would love to see them like kind of come around here to the backside, kill off some of these T1 mexes, and maybe even get all the way here into the back. But a transport drone that I have missed but didn't miss entirely because I just now saw it from that guy has set up a proxy base behind Haverin's base and now Haverin is going to be having to deal with this very very annoying harassment some T1 engineers getting shot down there are of course some bombers in the area but they're going to be shot at by this this D1 railgun DA1 a railgun built up by that guy 25 and that is going to mean that that guy is going to be able to continue to build up a couple more factories. This is a very sneaky and smart play coming out from that guy. Unfortunately, probably going to be shut down by the overwhelming number of T1 units pushing forward now. That guy also pressing on the front lines. Unfortunately, these triads going to get a ton of value along with Haverin's Com, especially if he has access to Overcharge right now, going to be really getting good value down out from this. And these triads, one of them is about to go down. And that guy is starting to use his comm to try and deal some sustained damage down onto those triads. But it's going to have to fall back because his comm cannot take too much fire from those himself. Over here to the west, a bit of a push out from Havern being shut down by Cerberus and uh, just random units over here for Lucas. And we're looking at a very even game. Map split 50-50. Maybe even a little bit of an advantage over to Haverin. Still, the mass differential between the teams isn't massive. But Haverin is ahead of all of Team 2. So currently, quite the play coming out from Haverin. He's going to shut down this proxy base that didn't really achieve all that much. But was very annoying. And now these engineers are going to try and get as much as they can out of it, reclaiming their own factories. Unfortunately, this is just going to be a nice little dump of reclaim over on towards Haverin. Although right now he's probably struggling with APM a little bit. So maybe that'll take a while to get reclaimed. But once he has an engineer over there, that's going to be a juicy little nearly a thousand mass in his coffers. As Haverin continues to work his stuff on the map. Still, I don't see... Oh, there we go. T2 now coming online for Haverin. It's going to be done in just a couple of seconds. T2 power gens already built up so we can go ahead and just immediately get to spamming out pillars and other useful units. A lot of Scorchers now on the cards as most of the Air Force in this game right now is held by Averin, or not ha Averin, Haverin. He is not Averin. That is a very different player. Uh, Haverin is in a good spot and he's going to be able to set himself up for success. Those Scorchers could get a lot of value. Not quite as valuable against UEF units, but against the Cybran and especially against Aeon players, T1 Bombers can deal an inordinate amount of damage to a T1 Land Force. I say not as good against the UEF because the UEF just, their entire thing is having a lot of HP. 300 HP versus 270 for the... For the Mantis, they can take a lot of hits. So the T1 bomber kind of harassment damage isn't as significant, but is there there still. And uh, move around Firebase. Uh, that guy, <laughs> he, he accidentally said it in the wrong chat, which is very annoying sometimes. 
we have T2 Navy now finished up over here in the south for that guy he's gonna have governors and he may be able to just bring them over here and deal some damage if he can take down these power generators if he can take down the t2 mexes in the main base of Havran 001 that could be huge Havran having much the same idea of building his himself his own governor so we're seeing very similar plays coming out from both sides over here to the west of this mountain range we have a large engagement now taking place between Lucas and Havran and right now it seems as though the overwhelming numbers out from Havran are just going to be extremely useful here are pushing a little bit too far forward though for my liking as they're gonna lose a lot of these strikers just to pushing forward it's gonna create a massive reclaim field already nearing and surpassing 4,000 mass in just a couple of seconds which means that this area is gonna be incredibly incredibly valuable for whoever can maintain control of it but right now we're seeing that all of these t2 engineers over here building up triads means that this area is going to become a no man's land maybe if he gets some sparkies out really messes with the targeting of those cerberus could get some uh, reclaim going on over here on this little bit of a battlefield large run by now going by on the right hand side going to be able to kill off some t1 mass extractors buzz kills going up to try and stop the governor cruiser from dealing any major damage that's a lot of scorchers that could cause a lot of damage but unfortunately for them they're gonna get shot at by a governor and now there are some interceptors in tow the first governor out for Haverin now firing towards the fire base of Lucas who is very paranoid and really like Cerberus that's that's a template well <laughs> You, you gotta you gotta use what you're good with and now there's a renegade out but that renegade's not gonna really be able to deal with that cruiser and the cruiser is now firing into t2 mexes and oh no it's a disaster we're gonna be seeing so much economic damage they need tmd but they're just not building it just yet so lucas in a really bad position has a t2 transport out may be able to get some spicy things done with that the run by over here to the east cleaned up only kills off two mass extractors the governor now trying to put pressure down onto the main base but unfortunately those buzz kills really going to live up to their name and just shut down the party the governor's house is not going to go the the governor's ball is what i should have said but you know whatever whatever as we've kind of reached a little bit mo a little bit of a moment of reprieve a lot of damage now being pumped out from this governor is there going to be any good response there is of course a bunch of uh, a bunch of TMD now queued up but this could be huge the governor missiles firing in they're going to be able to get another T2 mass extractor if not stopped very very soon and kills off a ton of build power that was in the area right there for Lucas and Lucas really feeling the pain of this governor class cruiser right now another t2 mex going down on the other side the tables are looking really different as the governor not quite able to get quite as much value from its long range siege capabilities all of the buzz kills going up now building now building staggered rows of tmd means that it's going to be very difficult for these governors to break through and get any sustained damage down onto Haverin's base. A T2 artillery though, a clink hammer fires in and is going for the T2 P gen. Can Haverin afford to lose this? He can afford to lose one. If he loses the other, he will be having major power struggles. A clink hammer has also been built up by Haverin, but it's not focusing down towards the fire base of that guy, 25, 25. And over to the west, more and more T2 mexes are going down. A second governor joining in the fun for Haverin. And it's starting to look relatively desperate now for Team 2. They've managed to keep the economy side of the game pretty even. But with this damage that's being sustained by Lucas, it's just going to be a lot harder for them to field the same level of units, I would assume. And that guy, 2525, trying his best to get some form of damage done. Ghetto gunships coming out, trying to help out over here. Unfortunately for that ghetto gunship, going to go down. Oh no, it lives on 22 HP. That is a go buy a lottery ticket, Courier, because you are the luckiest ghetto I've seen in a while. 
Corsair now out onto the field. Unfortunately, not going to be able to get very much done with that whatsoever. Trying to get some T2 Mexes built in the back line, but that's a very difficult proposal. And he has a few TMD now built up, but the cruiser count is rising. There's now a third on the field. Once it comes down here, it's going to be pretty difficult to deal with. Needs to keep building TMD. Cannot rest on his laurels has to make sure he gets that critical mass to just stop these governors from being a cost-effective option for Haverin. And it seems as though the governors might be able to get through, even with just two. It's They're getting dangerously close. Needs more TMD. And I think they're retargeted now onto the TMD itself. That is what you need to do if you're the governor player in this situation. Try and shut down the TMD before you can get too many built up. the governors out over here to the east for that guy managing to kill off a couple of the tmd but now they're focusing down onto something else needs to continue to focus down the buzz kills if you kill off an, all of these buzz kills you can get a lot of damage done did manage to kill off some of these t2 mexes i believe that was probably governor of fire leading to that uh, that development over here as that guy 25 25 he just doesn't have the units over here to defend this where are all of his units he's going for t2 production but he stopped producing t1 and now a bunch of t1 units rolling in killing off his clink hammer shutting down his fire base these triads going to get a ton of value up to two ranks of veterancy and 34 kills very valuable triads but they are going to go down unfortunately for that guy 25 25 his calm still going to be able to clean this up but needs desperately to to have more units on the field to put some pressure on to Haverin, who is just ecoing behind this. He's even lost some T2 Mexes now, but is still ahead of the combined mass of the blue team here in the south. And all of this area, yep, the TMD has been shut down by the governors. And it's just looking very dire here for Lucas. He's not able to hold off this sustained bombardment coming out from Haverin. Calm, cool, and collected is the play coming out from Haverin right now. Looking very, very comfortable with the situation. He's managing all of these fronts quite beautifully. And he's not really showing any signs of slowing down. He's continuing to build up large groups of pillars. And these pillars are starting to look relatively dangerous. His team 2 is just very light on the land forces. A lot of TG units, though. Now starting to show up out of the base of that guy, 2525. And I think as long as Havern continues to eco up, he's in a good position to win this game. Of course, time will always tell where it's going to go from here. The T2 Air HQ and one of the land factories down here for Lucas killed off in a gruesome manner the t2 land hq is still around still alive still does have access to t2 tech which he will be happy to have and over here to the southeast this island now also got a bunch of buzz kills built up that's five governors though that's gonna take a lot to completely shut out of dealing damage a bit of a attempted run by coming out from lucas but it's just gonna run into a t1 pd and be shut down A large push of pillars now coming over towards the firebase of Lucas. He has a lot of Cerberus built up, which I would think would be pretty good here. He even has the comm here to fire some shots out. He has the shields. Yeah, these pillars, they're going to maybe get a little bit of damage done, kill off a couple of Cerberus. And of course, Lucas is going to be hard pressed to replace anything he loses right here. He's so far going to lose a shield, doesn't manage to lose even a single Cerberus, so that's going to be a very decent reclaim field, and as long as he doesn't stray too far into the range of his opposition, he could get a lot. Putting a, uh, putting a attack order like right here, you could get a lot of reclaim, and 5,000 mass in this area could be just what Lucas needs to really rebuild in this game. As he is still struggling with the governor threat, another mech's going down. The TMD here just not quite enough. 
as we're now up to just three governors, but they're doing so much for the side of Haverin. A, the five governors over here, oh, has it been reduced? The four governors, there were five earlier. Or was there only four and I miscounted? I don't see a wreck for any governors, so I'm gonna guess I, I just miscounted. Are trying their damnedest to get any kind of damage done, but just not able to find any of that sustained damage. Power struggle, though, for Haverin, not quite able to afford to keep the lights on as his shields flicker on and off with that power stall. T3 land about to be started up now for Haverin. If he gets that, Percival's could be very, very strong. As well as T3 Navy, 62% complete. And a battleship queued up, and that would definitely spell the end of this base. But is that too much of an investment? I mean, yeah, you'll kill off this base that you've already massively crippled. But after that, then what? Like, you're not going to get much more out of the Navy than what you already have achieved. Unless you are Cybran and can build the floaty, or the walkie walkie naughty naughty, as Guile would say. Alrighty, so we have a lot more buzz kills going up. Haverin doing a decent job now, but it seems as though he might be kind of running out of wind in the sails. He seems to be struggling to find a way to deal any more damage other than these governors, which have already really just crippled Lucas. He's just not able to continue any form of production. He's down to 26 mass a second, which is quite pitiful for him right now. Although Team 2 have managed to keep the mass differential very, very close. They're not they're not massively behind economically, and they haven't been at any point. Just feels like Haverin's had a little bit more momentum, but right now it's seeming as though this fire base over here to the west is stopping him, and he's not really able been able to damage that guy 25-25 too much this entire game. We have some torpedo bombers now being built up by that guy 2525. And there are T2 artillery pieces now down for Haverin trying to stop the building of a summit. If this summit completes, that could be huge over here. Because if you can shut down these TMD, the governors will have free reign. Unfortunately, though, it seems that the... Uh, the artillery here is going to be able to shut down the building of this summit. Which is going to be very, very unfortunate for that guy. Very heads up play coming out from Haverin. To realize that that is an option. Uh, can you focus the governors down on to these TMD just right behind here? If you can manage to kill off just a few of these TMD, you can almost assuredly get kills onto those clink hammers. If this battleship is allowed to complete though, it will almost certainly kill off those clink hammers with little to no issue. As over here to the east, Haverin continuing to build up. He's got T3 land finishing up any time now, or any moment now, and he's finishing up a summit relatively soon as well. And Lucas has finally built up maybe enough TMD to hold out, although that, no, no, he just hasn't. He's still unable to hold on to his core mexes as the governor rounds fly in and it's just a brutal sight to behold and oh no that summit was so close to being done before the t3 naval factory went down and that's going to be a reclaim order given out by that guy 2525 he's given up on the idea of holding out he almost was able to kill off the clink hammers in time but not quite managing it and Maybe one more clink hammer goes down before. No, I don't even think that is the case. And that is going to lock that guy 25 out from the naval 
efforts he was preparing for earlier. And with T3 land finished up and Percival's now being pumped out from this factory, Avern could be in a very scary position. Also, he might, he might be able to just spam Titans here. I don't know, Titans may have a little bit of struggle with this massive T2 force. So Percival's might be the better option. Once you build up a critical mass, you can just wipe this off the face of the planet and push forwards. And Lucas, he's just unable to deal with these governors. And even if he were, it'd be futile at this point as this summit class is just going to roll in, kill off any TMD that is here. And this side of the map is now just forfeit for the Southern team. Flapjacks now built up over here on the western side, trying to shut down this base. Haverin getting a lot of value out of mobile missile launchers this game. Go ahead and just speed it up a tiny, tiny bit as we have very little action going on. And these four torpedo bombers, if you could just get up five, it only takes five to kill off a governor. So five torpedo bombers kill off a governor, five more kill off another one. Try and buy some time for Lucas, although, as I said, now it may not matter because this summit class is going to come in and just wreak havoc down here on this side of the map. A uh, few hoplites strolling into range. What was that explosion? Oh, huge land battle now taking place. Uh, for Haverin and that guy... Haverin, unfortunately, though, has mostly T1, and in the T2 that he does have in this force is Flapjacks, which means that this T2 force out from that guy going to get a lot of value for its efforts. These governors were attacked by a few hoplites, but that was killed off quite quickly by the Summit-class battleship. And now, over here on the front lines, a large push coming out from Lucas. It's kind of a last-ditch effort. And all it's going to meet is demise as this force is doomed to fail. Shield on the way for Haverin, trying to just make sure his comm is as healthy and as protected as possible. Just needs to avoid a snipe as he's pulled ahead. Or he's still not pulled ahead economically by a significant margin. Team 2 still keeping on the coattails of that economic play out from Havern. He hasn't ecoed quite as hard as maybe he could have. And he's going up to T3 on the comm after finishing up shield. These T2 forces out from that guy cleaning up the last vestiges of these T1 units out from Havern. This forward base getting destroyed much more than I thought it would have been. As all but one triad down now, and this Viper could very possibly kill off that last triad, or even the Mantis if they focus it down. The triad still getting a lot of value here, though. Sparky out from that guy, 25, about to kill a triad. Oh, man. What a hero. Viper killing off a Flapjack and then dying to a Lobo. Large forest now out from that guy coming over here to the west to help shut down and kill this off once and for all. Let's go ahead and look at the reclaim numbers. 27,000 for that guy and Haverin only at 5,000. So right now that guy doing very well on reclaim. Really keeping the total mass accrued in the favor of his team. As that is something Team 2 has to say. Economically they've gotten more mass throughout this game. But these governors and this summit are just brutal. And Lucas is kind of just in a very difficult position. T3 air has been achieved now for that guy. Is he going to get a strat bomber out onto the field and get some significant damage on it? He already has one out. I'm just blind. Up to 10 kills already. He's fly he flew over a little bit of AA. He's managed to kill off, I think that's four, maybe five. T2 mexes, one, two, three, four, five, we'll say six T2 mexes with this ambassador. And he looks like he has no signs of slowing down anytime soon. And now he's taken the economic lead, 176 mass a second versus 143 Haverin. Has really just lost the script and he's starting to fall apart. A cougar 
nearly takes down this ambassador, but this ambassador has already paid itself off, and if it can manage to kill off just a couple more T2 mechs, I am sure that that guy will be happy. This one that was upgrading to T3 is going to go down. The ambassador with its regen stays alive just a little bit longer before flying off screen, so no, not even a strat wreck to reclaim for Havran. And now things are, the turntables have turned, Woo! As that guy and Lucas looking very strong. Especially that guy being able to get, get up to such a high economy so quickly, he's gonna be able to spam out more and more T3 air. Do we have T3 air anywhere remotely close for Havran? No, we don't. The one thing he does have is he has a decent count of, uh, of Percivals at the moment, I believe. He's sitting on four. No, he's lost multiple Percivals. Where did he lose all of his Percivals? Are there dead Percivals over here somewhere? Not seeing them if there are. Huh. Oh, they're all dead over here. Okay. A bunch of Percivals died over here to something. Maybe the Strap Bomber had an errant bomb or just the overwhelming T2 force that was over here earlier was maybe just enough to kill him off. Is T3 land on the way for that guy? No, he's still committing to T2 land, but yes, T3 air. And that just might be more valuable. Especially if he can manage to set up four or five strat bombers and just mass bomb mexes. Sniping the comm would be quite difficult with that shield upgrade and him being in this base with cougars and such to protect, protect him. Although not undoable. But now that guy is sitting at nearly 200 mass a second, whereas Haverin only at 135. Another Strat Bomber out onto the field, killing off two T2 mechs, turning around to kill off a third. And Haverin is looking like he's going to collapse at any moment. He's played a really strong game so far, but right now it just doesn't seem like he has an answer for this T3 air incursion. As Ambassador is getting a ton of value now for that guy 25-25. He has a T3 Mex back here that may even be under threat. I mean, he's going to have plenty of time. More Cruisers is probably a good option. Just kind of shut down this northern side, although that's an expensive way to deal with it. Another bomb landing, another T2 Mex going down. And that number, that green number for Haverin is slowly counting downwards. And that's something you never want to see happen to yourself or your allies another t2 mechs falls and i'm sure more will follow another t2 mechs gonna fall one second oh the strap bomber goes down <laughs> i was gonna slow down the game and get like a really cool shot of that and be yesterday and be yesterday uh, but was not quite able to. There's another one coming up. We'll get a cool shot. That'll be the, uh, that'll be the thumbnail. As that's kind of like the only interesting thing going on right now is the Strat Bombers. We do, of course, have this Naval Bombardment coming out from this Summit Class. 80 kills and 15,000 mass killed. Very, very nice for that Summit. Four vet, one vet, no vet. A lot of damage being done by these governors as well. As is to be expected, they've completely wiped Lucas's main base off the map. Another strap bomb done for that guy. Is he going to send it forward? Come on, at least just have it fly for a little bit. If you fly, you, come on. Okay, here we go, here we go. We're going to slow it down a whole bunch. Okay, speed it up just a little bit. Let's let it get up to up to up to height. All right, up to plus a four or minus four. All right. That's not what I wanted. Why is the uh, lighting so messed up here? All right, there we go. Man, the models in this game are so beautiful. Have I ever mentioned that? Ever mentioned how beautiful this game is? Just like all the beautiful people watching. And uh, let's go ahead and do this. That, 
and uh, we can watch this strap bomber as it does its thing and get a pretty cool view of the battlefield so far. A large push coming out from Lucas, but it's just T1, so it's going to be a de destroyed so quickly. It's going to be annihilated off of the face of the planet. This strap bomber coming in, going to be able to kill off this clink hammer or maybe just these triads. And that is going to really kind of just be a huge focal point here now. We have T3 air achieved for Havran. Can he afford this without a T3 P gen? Wow, he has a lot of T2 power generation. Or there's a T3 P gen that I'm just blind to. As he's building ASF, and he has a few out into the skies now. That ambassador now going to be under a lot of threat but is going to be able to kill off yet another probably t2 mechs no nope, going to kill off some clink hammers not quite sure how dangerous those are a summit about to be finished up over here but those clink hammers oh they killed off the build power oh that could have been huge that's a lot of scouts wow that is a lot of scouts and that is a scary fucking army out from Havran. Okay, start upgrades. What what upgrades? Uh, okay. He's apparently asking to do a tele snipe, or that guy wants to do a tele snipe and pay for it. Which, at this point, that might be Lucas's best option. Did that strap bomber make it all the way back home safe? Nope, that's not the same one. Oh wait, but the, it is still alive over here, just killing off everything. Uh, some interceptors coming in. Wow, okay. Th these strap bombers have been ridiculously and uh, uh, great, good. A, a positive adjective here. <laughs> just ridiculously efficient over here for that guy. Why did I speed it? I just wanted plus two. We're going to speed it up just a little bit. Ambassador running away from interceptors, getting shot down. As this army approaches, and this army out from... Havran threatens to end the game, honestly. He is in such a strong position. T3 is now done for Lucas. Laser and teleport is what that guy 2525 is asking for. And as we watch the Percival's advance, the T2 army over here for that guy is quickly disappearing. They're getting some damage done, but the Percivals are oh so tanky. And they are just creating a firing line of doom and destruction. And the Percivals are just marching forward with great malicious intent. And now the base is under Heavy assault from Havran, and Lucas, he's finished up Laser. He can maybe use that to defend against these Percivals for now. Laser is an incredibly powerful upgrade. The Percival's gonna have to fire directly into that Cybercom if they want any chance of survival here, and they're not quite doing that. They're focusing down the power grid. If they kill off the power grid, that could be huge. One P gen going down, two auxiliaries going down, a third T3 P gen, or a second T3 P gen going down. That's gonna be very, very painful for that guy. He loses all of his T3 P gens, which means that teleporter is just not gonna be an option. Lucas down to a dangerously low HP pool. Is he gonna survive? Another personal shot will kill him off, and he manages to get a rank of veterancy at the perfect time to survive here. He has laser still, but the base of that guy is in shambles. And right when I thought that Team 2 was going to win, in comes Havran with the huge play. Kills off the power grid, basically cuts that guy down at the knees. He has a battleship. He finally got the summit. And they clean up the force. But at what cost? With... All of that power generation gone, Team 2 is staring down the barrel of a very ugly letter, and that letter is L, as Haverin has clawed his way back 
It's been a back and forth game, but almost assuredly with a blow that crippling, Team 2 is surely heading to the gallows. Teleporter is going to take much longer than 15 minutes, I believe. I don't believe you're going to be able to finish that anytime soon, Lucas. Power generator is going to be spammed up by that guy. He's negative 12,000 power. Needs to stop trying to produce ASF as that just won't work. An ambassador now in the skies for Haverin. And a Percival firing line is coming down south to wreak havoc and possibly end the game. Honestly, I think that the game is pretty much over. So what we're going to do, we're just going to get a nice cinematic shot. We can still see the comms. And we're going to speed it up a little bit. I'll even do this. We can see the mini mini map in case you want to see what's going on there. But a strap bomber is slowly killing off this summit. Summit trying to get any value it can. Monkey Lord queued up, but I don't think that's going to finish. As... The land forces for Haverin, I think, are just too overwhelming. And now with the complete air control, can just use ambassadors to impose his will on this match. And Haverin fighting a one versus two from the eight minute mark. All the way to nearly 50 minutes of gameplay. Percivals are coming in. Lucas is taking a ton of damage from these Percivals. That guy trying to get in, maybe try and use an Overcharger 2 to help out his Cybern ally, but an Ambassador comes in, killing off Lucas. And that guy is going to die to the Percivals. Thank you all for watching. You've been so beautiful. Thank you to the Patreons. Thank you to the channel members. I'll see you in the next cast. This is Willow signing off.